Hello Crescendo friends, my name is Chris Belucho and many of you know me from my many performances with the choir over the years. Welcome to my home studio. One of my areas of musical expertise is of course historic brass instruments and Christine Gevert has asked me to discuss the natural trumpet and some of its history with you. Ancient humans discovered very early on that an expanding tube of wood or shell could amplify vibration from the lips over a great distance. We know of trumpet-like instruments in iconography from as far back as ancient Mesopotamia. The Greeks, Egyptians, Celts, and Romans also utilized their own trumpet-like instruments for ceremonial and signaling purposes, and some of these have survived to the present day. The single unifying principle of all of these instruments from ancient times up to a newly made modern trumpet you could purchase online today is that the sound is produced by a lung full of air vibrating the lips and that sound being amplified by an instrument. That simple fact has never changed, although the technique by which this is accomplished, of course, has. By the time of J.S. Bach, craftsmen had long since mastered the skill of bending metal tubing and were producing extremely beautiful sounding, and in many cases, elaborately ornamented trumpets. This instrument here, which I perform on regularly, was made recently in 2007 and was loosely modeled after an 18th century original by the Nuremberg maker Johann Leonard Ea III. As you can see, it is a length of over seven feet of coiled brass tubing with some ornamental accents made out of silver. The mouthpiece, which is also after a Baroque era original, uh, is quite broad and deep. And the instrument itself is held together by a wooden block wrapped with cordage that its only purpose is to hold the instrument together. It's important to remember that prior to the last quarter of the 18th century, the trumpet was relatively chained by the bonds of the natural harmonic series and could only play scalar passages in the extreme high register as the notes of the series come closer together. In the 20th century, this is one of the reasons that the piccolo trumpet became popular because it facilitated performance of the high registers so frequently called for in Baroque music. How is the natural trumpet different from a modern trumpet? Well, with the burgeoning size of orchestras and changing musical tastes occurring during the early 19th century, came an interest to fully chromaticize brass wounds and fill in the gaps, so to speak. An exhaustive amount of mechanical trial and error occurred, and the solutions that eventually reigned supreme were piston and rotary valves. Both of these were in their rudimentary stages of their present day form, by the late 1830s. Each achieves full chromaticism by lengthening the amount of tubing of the instrument each time a valve is depressed. The first valve, full step, the second valve, half step, and the third valve, minor third, and combinations of these together to further lengthen the instrument. Despite the limitations of the harmonic series, Composers of the 17th and 18th centuries, including such high Baroque luminaries as Handel, Telemann, and Johann Sebastian Bach, wrote some of the most virtuosic and stunningly beautiful music for the trumpet. The trumpeting guilds of the German and Austro-Hungarian kingdoms, as well as the civic musicians known as Stadtpfeifer, had elevated brass playing to a high art by this point, and composers took full advantage of these players and their abundant skills. J.S. Bach, during his Leipzig period, composed for the many superb civic musicians who regularly performed at both St. Thomas and St. Nicholas Church. And we know that for performances of the Leipzig Collegium, many of these same players were hired to assist the student musicians. The most well-known of Bach's trumpeters, Gottfried Reicha, would have performed the first trumpet parts on nearly all of the works of Bach's Leipzig period from 1723 to the fall of 1734. The cantata Tunit Ihr Pauken, which Bach later adapted for use in the first part of the Christmas Oratorio, 
which originally performed at the Zimmermann Coffee House in December of 1733, for the birthday celebration of the Electress of Saxony, Maria Josefa. As always, Bach utilizes the choir of three trumpets plus drums in a grand and virtuosic manner, initially to celebrate the honor of the nobility and later adapted the same music to celebrate and honor the birth of Jesus.